All right, guys, Zach here from PRE. Uh, we're going to talk about some rods today. Um, Cali's approached us about testing their Subaru uh, EJ series rods. Um, pe some people have been using them with good success. Um, you know, we're in a unique position now to really test the, the durability of some rods. So they sent us these to test, and I thought we'd do a little unboxing, show you what we have been using, what we're on now, and the Cali's. Just as a visual comparison, um, I really do feel like you can learn a lot by just visually comparing rods um, or any engine component for that matter and learn a lot about the quality that's there, the thought that goes into the engineering, things like that. So what we're going to talk about first is what we, we have been using up until this year, which is the Manly I-Beam. Um, now this is their new rod. It has machining along the length of the rod right here. Um, the older ones did not have that. Um, this lightens up the rod a fair amount without really taking any strength out. So um, that's a worthwhile thing to make sure you have if you're putting new rods in your in your motor. Um, the surface finish is, is pretty good. Um, it's a lot like a lot of the, the less expensive rods like the Compstar H-beams here from Cali's or or the manly uh, H-tufts or H-beams. Um, so we got total weight on this rod at 565 grams. I've checked all this, by the way, it's pretty much spot on. Um, big end, 383, pin end, 182. Now, the big end is the crank bore here and the pin end is obviously the end connected to the piston. Um, now, if, if your total rod weight makes a, obviously a huge difference if you're revving your engine, but Pin end weight is very important um, at high RPM because you have this nice long lever and any weight on this end, the piston end, the wrist pin, the small end of the rod, that makes a really big difference in durability when it comes to um, high RPM use. So again, we did buckle this rod eventually. It is only rated to 250 horsepower per cylinder by Manly. Um, we buckled and eventually broke it right in the normal stressed area here in the middle of the, the rod. So uh, now what we're on is a custom built Carrillo HD. One thing you'll notice is this is the only H beam on the market that's rated for the kind of power that, that we're putting through it. Um, they rate it for 350 horsepower per cylinder um, and a lot of torque. When I when I asked them about this rod, they said they find with the short rod lengths like this, being 5.216 inches, that this design is better at, at um, taking torque and not, you know, buckling in the area above the big end of the rod. So um, take it or leave it, that's what they told me. Um, some cool stuff about this that you won't see on the cheaper H beams. Down inside this, uh, the H, let's say, they run like a, du a double ball in through here and there's actually like a ribbed surface in there. That rib adds strength all the way from the bolt to the pin. Um, and this is pocketed out really well in here to shave weight. It's a Carrillo bolt. Um, these are the upgraded car bolts. I really like the 916's head on these. Um, it makes it really easy to torque because um, you can get a nice big socket on there. However, the bolt diameter is the same as the other rods. And if you have cases that have been machined a lot, this can cause some problems for you because um, it'll touch in some areas. So you got to be careful of that when you're assembling your motor. One thing about these, and these are a low volume unit, I only order them in sets of three, they're, they're quite expensive, um, is I've noticed on the billet cranks at least from Manly that the big end of the rod is too tight and you will need to to machine these a bit to to enlarge the thrust clearances for big power. Weight on this rod, excuse me, weight on this rod, 565 again, the exact same weight as the I-beam from Manly, 383 grams on this side. However, the the pin end, the reciprocating weight, let's say, is slightly lower at 10 grams less. Oh, the other thing I wanted to point out that I wasn't a fan of on this rod, however, it, it's still got plenty of material here, but this is the same blank as their shorter rod, but because it's plus two, they simply moved the pin up in the rod, so you can see how it's eccentrically bored kind of on the end of the rod there. 
Um, it makes it a little thinner up here, but if you're trying to make power, that's you know, if you're not doing a bunch of D-cell work and stuff, this isn't going to be that big of a problem. And it's still very thick. Okay, so we're moving on now to the Cali's Ultra. This is their highest end rod for the Subaru. Um, I'll say pulling it out of the box right away. I'm really impressed with the surface finish of this rod. Um, it, it easily has the most amount of finishing work on it and profiling to try to keep weight in the areas it needs it and also take it out in others. It comes with an ARP fastener. Um, so this is a super high quality bolt they send with it. Again, these are a little harder to torque, smaller socket. The, the, the wrench just walks around on here more is all, um, even on a brand new socket. But it does gain you that clearance down here, which is kind of nice. Really well profiled in the corners. The fillets are really, really well done and they're large radius fillets. Um, which is good. That's how you get a lot of strength um, in these areas. The pin end is the lightest reciprocating weight of any of the rods tested here. And you can see that there's a lot of work here to profile the end of the rod. It's rounded. It has this back cut on the uh, pin end. And the bushing is relatively thin in this rod, so they could keep quite a bit of um, solid material here. Um, we don't seem to have too many problems plowing the bushings out of them. It's always uh, some problem down in the, the lower area of the rod. Um, so this is 581 grams. It is the, the heaviest rod out of the bunch. Um, but you can see areas where they added a lot of material in here. Um, the nice thing is though they did take it off of the pin end to put it in down here which is which is nice um, so we'll be testing this rod um, they rate it for over 300 horsepower per cylinder um, this is a standard length we'll be getting some plus two millimeter length versions to test out in our race engines um, so you know look for those results um, the next step here is I have a billet crank from them. I have these rods. I have some of their cheaper rods. And I'm going to be trucking all this stuff up to uh, my local machinist who I trust with all of our uh, you know, finish work on parts here. And we're going to measure the crank for run out. We're going to measure these rods for height. We're going to make sure that they're every bit as high quality as, as they say they are. So uh, stay tuned for that portion of it. That'll be the uh, the next episode of this rod test before we actually put them in a motor and uh, put some power to them. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Uh, hopefully you learned a little bit. Again, this is not scientific. This is just me inspecting these components, showing you what our experience has been. Um, this is the rod that's currently in the Black Widow um, that we just did, you know, 1120 wheel on. Um, the motor's fine right now, of course. Uh, the big test will be Kalinga. Um, the next motor going in that car will be built with Cali's Ultra components, and we'll be able to kind of compare the wear characteristics and all that at the, the same power levels. So stay tuned. Thanks for tuning in again. Bye.